What is going on YouTube? Just helping you out here. And for today's video, I'll be doing chapter 21, problem 20 in the Fundamentals of Physics 10th edition textbook by Walker, Halliday, and Resnick. Chapter 21 is all about Coulomb's law, and in problem 20 we have three point charges and a couple different scenarios, and we are asked to compute the ratio of two of those charges. And so for part A, if we look at the graph that we are given in the problem, you can see that the net force is equal to zero at zero degrees, and you can see that we have a maximum net force at 180 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of the fact that F net equals zero at zero degrees for two reasons. So F net is equal to zero at zero degrees. And so if we draw out what the configuration of the charges looks like in this case, here we have charge A, here we have charge B, and here we have charge C. And these are separated by the distance D. Now this is the configuration for zero degrees, and we see that all the charges are on the same line, which is advantageous because then we don't have to deal with any angles or components or anything like that. And since F net is equal to zero, that eliminates one variable that we don't need to deal with. And so what we can do is just analyze this system that we have right here. And what we need to figure out is the ratio of charge C to charge B. And the graph tells us the net force on particle A. And so what we need to do is set an arbitrary sign on charge A. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assume that it's a positive charge. You could make it negative, it does not matter, you will get the same answer. And then I'm going to assume that B has a negative charge. Again, you could make it positive, it does not matter, you will get the same answer. And so now what we can do is if we're looking at charges here, so B is negative and A is positive, meaning that B is going to pull A toward it since these are opposite charges. So you're gonna have a force like this that I can call F AB. And now we know that the net force in this configuration is equal to zero, which means you will also need another force in the opposite direction. So you will need an equal and opposite force this way, and that's going to have to be the force due to charge C. So I'm going to call this FAC. And if FAC is pointed this way, that means that C is repelling charge A, meaning that C has to be a positive charge. And so now that we did that analysis, we can write out our force balance. So F net, which we said is equal to zero, is equal to the forces in the positive direction, so FAB, minus the forces in the negative direction, so minus FAC. And if we add FAC to both sides, we will find that FAB is equal to FAC. And now what we can do is we can substitute their Coulomb's law expressions into those. And so that's going to be K times charge A times charge B divided by the radius of AB squared. And that's going to be equal to K times QA times QC divided by the radius of AC squared. And one thing I just want to note, this K right here, is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is your vacuum permittivity constant. I just want to lump all that into k because it's unnecessary to write it all out every time. And so what we can do here is since we have k and qa on both sides, we can cancel those out. And then what we can do is we can substitute what we know for the radius ab and the radius ac. If we look up here, a to b is distance d, and A to C is D plus D, so it's 2D. And so we can substitute both of those in. QB over D squared is equal to QC divided by 2D squared. So 2D squared is 4D squared. So we'll put 4D squared here. And now if we look here, we have D squared and D squared in the denominator. So we can cancel those out. And that's going to leave us with QB is equal to QC divided by 4. And now if we divide both sides by QB and multiply both sides by 4, we will find that QC divided by QB is equal to 4. And that is the ratio of the charges we are looking for. However, we need to analyze this for sine. If we look up here, we see that QC is a positive charge and QB is a negative charge, meaning that this 
must be negative 4. So QC over QB is equal to negative 4 for part A, and that is your final answer for that part. Now, part B is a little more complicated. If you look at the graph for part B, we see that curve 2 does not have a net force at 0. So that means our expression that we developed up here will not have this 0 in it. It will have some function of F0. And that's a problem because that introduces another variable. And so what we're going to need to do is we need to pick two points on the graph that we can write an expression for so that we can eliminate that F0. And again, like I said up here, it's a lot easier to analyze this when the particles are linear because then you don't have to deal with the angles and components and all that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick the angles 0 degrees and the angles 180 degrees because those are the two spots where all of our charges will still be in the same line. And those both actually happen to be very convenient spots because at 0 degrees we see we have a maximum net force and if we look at 180 degrees we have a minimum net force which as I will explain later, is useful information to solve this problem. And so real quick, I'm just going to make a note. So we're going to pick two points. And I said that's going to be 180 degrees and 0 degrees. And the reasoning for that was linearity and max slash min. So just have those in your head. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with 0 degrees. So for the zero degrees case, we are going to have the same particle configuration as we did up here. So I'm just going to draw it again. We have particle A, we have particle B, we have particle C, and again we have distance D, distance D, and so looking off the graph in this case we see that F net is equal to 5 times F naught divided by 4 and that is going to be equal to some sort of force balance. And so what we need to do is we need to do another charge analysis over here and figure out what that's going to be. And now since we know that at zero degrees we have a maximum net force, we're going to assume that the two force vectors are pointed both in the positive x direction. And so again, I'm just going to assume that A has some charge. This time I'll make it negative. You could make it positive. It does not matter. And so what we need to think about is if both of our force vectors are pointed in the same direction, that means that we would need B and C to have the same charge. So then we can think about, okay, do you want to make it negative or positive? If we think about if it was negative, those would be repulsive forces pointing it in this direction. But we know our force is positive, so that can't be the case. And so what we need to do is say these two are positive. And then what we'll have is an attractive force this way, that's FAB, and another attractive force to particle C, that's FAC. And so since those are both pointed in the same direction, we can say that the net force is FAB plus FAC. And again, what we can do is substitute in their Coulomb's law expressions, and so we'll have five times F naught over 4 is equal to K Q A Q B divided by R A B squared plus K times Q A times Q C divided by R A C squared. Again, our R A B and R A C are going to be the exact same thing we had up here, so our denominators will be D squared and 4D squared respectively. And so I'll just write that out really quick. We'll have 5 times F naught divided by 4 is equal to K Q A Q B divided by D squared plus K Q A Q C over 4 D squared. And now just to simplify some of the math, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4. So that's going to leave me with 5 times F naught is equal to 4 K, Q, A, Q, B over D squared plus K, Q, A, Q, C over D squared. And now I'm going to factor a K, Q, A over D squared from both of these quantities. And I'll have 5 times F naught is equal to K, Q, A, over d squared times 4qb 
plus QC. And that'll be our expression for zero degrees for now. And now what we are going to do is we're going to move on to 180 degrees. So for 180 degrees, we can draw out our line again, except this time we're going to have particle B right here, particle A right there, and particle C roughly right here. And this is because originally B was right here, but we are told that B can move on a circle like this. So 180 degrees from here would be over here. And so that means that this distance right here is still D, but this distance is 2D. And again, we already have our charges established, so we can put those in. And so that means that we're going to have an attractive force that way, which is FAB, and we're going to have another attractive force this way, which is FAC. And so we're going to write out our net force equation. So we have F net, and if we look at the graph, that is equal to 3F naught over 4, and that's going to be equal to FAC in the positive direction, minus FAB in the negative direction. And now what we can do is we can substitute in our Coulomb's law expressions, and so we'll have 3F naught over 4 is equal to KQA QC over RAC squared minus K, Q, A, Q, B over R, A, B squared. And if we plug in our radii, that'll give us 3F naught over 4 is equal to K, Q, A, Q, C over 4D squared minus K, Q, A, Q, B over D squared. Again, I'm going to multiply through by a 4 to make the math a little easier. So 3F naught is equal to K Q A Q C over D squared minus 4 K Q A Q B over D squared. And now I'm going to factor out the K Q A over D squared again. And that's going to leave us with Q C minus 4 Q B. And that's our expression for 180 degrees, which actually turns out to be fairly similar to the one that we had for zero degrees. And so now we have two expressions that have this F naught in them, and we need to get rid of that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this expression that we found for zero degrees and divide that by the expression that we found for 180 degrees. And so that's going to give us 5F naught over 3F naught is equal to k times qa over d squared times 4 qb plus qc. All of that divided by k qa over d squared times qc minus 4 qb. And now if we look at this, we have f naught and f naught, so those cancel. And then we have k qa over d squared up here and down here. So that entire quantity goes away too. And so what that leaves us with is 5 over 3 is equal to 4 QB plus QC divided by QC minus 4 QB. And now what we can do is we can cross multiply. And so we're going to multiply both sides by QC minus 4 QB and multiply both sides by 3. And that's going to give us 5 QC minus 20 QB is equal to 12 QB plus 3 QC. And now what we can do is we can add 20 QB to both sides and subtract 3 QC from both sides, and that's going to give us 2 QC is equal to 32 QB. And now if we divide both sides by QB and divide both sides by 2, that's going to tell us that QC over QB is equal to 16. And now again, we need to do the same thing we did over here, do a little sign check, and so we have QC over QB. Up here, QC and QB are both positive, and so this is indeed the final answer to part B. And so that's about it for this problem. If you found this video helpful, please drop a like, leave a comment if you have any questions or an idea for a future video, and lastly, please don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about my channel so I can grow and help more of you guys out. I'm just helping you out. See you in the next video.